One day, uh, after a church service, a priest went out shopping. He had to complete some errands. And the priest wore his cassock and his cross, and he, he drove around that afternoon. And as he drove around, he realized he had forgotten that it was Halloween. <laughs> so everyone was in their costumes, uh, going trick-or-treating. This is pre-COVID, right? So, so the priest gets to the store where he's going, and he parks his car, and he heads into the store. And he sees two men who are leaving the store. And when the two men saw him, and he didn't know them, but they started smiling and waving at him. And uh, the priest smiled and waved back. And one of the two men said, I love your Halloween costume. And before the priest could say anything, uh, you sh I think we just need to maybe close this door right here. Just close that door. Yeah. It's hidden the fire alarm. So, so um, So before the priest could say anything, um, the, uh, the other man, so the, the first man says, I love your Halloween costume. The priest couldn't say anything. He, 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 he was kind of shocked. And, and before he could say anything, the other person says, you should probably add some flair to your costume. Uh, you, you need to make sure that people know how ridiculous religion and believing God is. And so the priest's like, eyes kind of get shocked and he gives, this awkward smile and he, and he sighs and he says, gentlemen, I, I am really a priest. <laughs> Sorry for the misunderstanding. What don't you like? And, he, and, and you know, he, 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 he genuinely asks, he says, what don't you like about the Christian faith? And both men also <laughs> now at this point look awkward, right? And uh, they look at each other and say, well, one of them finally says, well, first and foremost, I don't know if I can say this in the altar. He says, first and foremost, I hate your God. Go back to the altar now, and I can say, and, and you know, such a, such, a, such a difficult thing to say, but he says it so easily. He says that word, H-A-T-E. Uh, he hates God. And the thing is, the thing is, the priest then responds, and the priest is, he doesn't miss a beat. This priest, this priest knows, he understands. And this priest says, tell me about this God that you hate, because probably I hate him too. The man retorts, and he knows, he's like, no, you're not gonna, this priest is not gonna get me. He said, no, this is your God. I prayed to him for years to help me with something, and I prayed and prayed and prayed to hear my prayer, but he never answered me, God doesn't exist. And uh, the priest then looks at the other man and says, what about you? Why don't you like God? And the other man says, well, when I was a boy, my mother got sick. And I prayed hard, but it didn't matter. She died. And when they came to tell me that she died, they told him that God needed her in heaven to be his angel. This man looked dead into the priest's eyes and said, what kind of God kills people to keep them for himself, I needed my mother more than him. The priest frowned and said, you are right. Those, those sound like terrible gods to me. The priest looked at the first man and said, it sounds like you were worshiping a gift-giving genie that wasn't doing his job, and I wouldn't pray to him either. To the other man, the priest said, that God you were describing who wants and desires to separate a mother from her child sounds terrible. I wouldn't pray to him either. The priest explained, the God that I worship is a loving God. He's actually beyond love, He's beyond the word love. He is the God that wants the best for us. He is not a genie or a gift giver because he is a heavenly father. And a father doesn't give everything to his children. He gives what is best for his children. He didn't like, he doesn't, and he doesn't like seeing people die. And so for that, the God that I worship loved us so much that he battled death. He battled death for us and overcame it so that death can't separate a mother from her son anymore. Both men 
scoffed and said, whatever, man, whatever, Padre. I don't see get God. I don't see that God that you're talking about anywhere. And with that, they walked away. These two men in this encounter reminds us that there are many of us who can't see God. And the priest was talking about it the same way, like the, the, these two men and the priest who were talking about it, it reminds us of how people couldn't see Jesus to be the Messiah. They want Jesus to be, they want the Messiah to be this great political figure. They want the Messiah to be someone who's a great warrior. They want the Messiah to be someone who is strong and, and, and charismatic and will do everything that they want him to do. But the thing is, we don't get to choose our Messiah. We don't get to make believe who God is and say, God is this, this, and this. No, God is already existing. We all have our own ideas. Everyone has their own ideas. I, you have my, your own ideas of who I am. But who you believe I am is not who I am. Who I believe you are is not who you are. You are who you are. In today's gospel, Jesus asked the, the simple, most important question to the disciples. <laughs> if there is an important, one important question in all of scripture, this is it. Who do you say that I am? Jesus Christ asking us and his disciples, who do you say that I am? What does that mean? What does he mean when he says, who do you say that I am? Who do you recognize me to be? People all over thought different things, but no one thought he was the Messiah because he didn't seem like the Messiah. He didn't seem what everyone's head said the Messiah should be like. The people that day expected a different type of Messiah. They had a different idea of who God is. But our God is beyond us. Our Messiah is, is beyond us. Those, those people at that time couldn't recognize Christ because they already had a false idol, a false image in their own heads. So, what do we know? The answer to the question, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answers, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. What does the word Christ mean? It means Messiah. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, blessed are you because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. So if you are struggling in disbelief or even have just been overcome with anxiety and worry over the last many days, I encourage you to reevaluate the God that you are worshiping. We should make sure that we are not worshiping a God of our heads, but the true God, the God that really exists. Today is Kudosh Ito, the sanctification of the church, the beginning of the church calendar, and we are called to check our hearts and our minds and ask this question, who do we say Jesus Christ is? And the thing is, we might have different ideas of who God is and who our Christ is, but we need to rid ourselves of these idols, of these misunderstandings of who God is. If we have any doubts of who God is, I ask you and, and tell you to turn to the prayers of the church. Because in the prayers of the church, they are intermixed with scripture. And in these prayers, it says what? It tells us what? It tells us who God is. Listen to all of the songs. Hear any of the words that we just sang in the morning prayer in the matin service. All of it was preaching who God is. And through that, when we know and when we proclaim the right God, the Orthodox God, Orthodox means right way of worship, Orthodox. So they're the right way, the right person. When we look to that right God and our hearts and minds are connected with him, not a God of our, of our minds, a genie, a gift giver, a, a, an evil God that, that, that separates us. No, the God of love, the God, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the God who died for us. When we connect with that God, 
our doubts, our doubts fade away. And we come into the presence of something truly transcendent, something beyond this world. And so I'm calling you now today, as we begin this church calendar, to come with me on this journey of the prayer life, to pray not only today, but every day, to call to that God. So let us pay attention, to not get our minds to wander, and do our best to recognize Him, to give the true, living, and eternal God our glory and praise, all glory and honor to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Special song from page number 279.